Tomahawk TV News, Montec County's only newscast, coming at you from Nocona High School. Welcome back, Montec County. It's time for this week's edition of Tomahawk TV News. We hope you enjoy this week's stories. First off, we have the weekly music review with Alex Sampson and Anthony Rodriguez. Buenos dias, mi amigos. Welcome to another episode of Tomahawk's Moment for Music. This week is Mexican Music Appreciation Week. <laughs> And thank you. That was your Mexican Music Appreciation Week. Hasta luego. Next, Karen Gibbs has a recap of the Marvel Universe movies. Welcome to the Movie Dumpster, the segment in Tomahawk TV News where I, Karen Gibbs, tell you what's worth seeing and what's not. This week will be a little different from others. With the upcoming release of Captain America Civil War, I've chosen to do a quick recap over the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I've chosen to exclude such films as The Incredible Hulk and Ant-Man, as these films have little to do with the Civil War storyline. Here goes nothing. We start in World War II, where a young scrapper by the name of Steve Rogers enlists in the Army Science Experiments to become the world's first super soldier, otherwise known as Captain America, the first Avenger. In this adventure, we see Cap defeat Red Skull and obtain a mysterious cube for the United States government. Attempting to save the cube, he lands his jet in ice, freezing himself for over 40 years. Now let's move on to the Iron Man films, both one and two. In these films, we see Tony Stark, a genius. Uh, genius. Billionaire playboy philanthropist. <laughs> and weapons dealer kidnapped in the Middle East. He creates his own suit made of, you guessed it, iron and escapes. After he escapes, he becomes Iron Man and saves the world from not one, but two copycats. These films introduce both Nick Fury and Black Widow, two mainstays in the Avengers universe. Now we look at Thor. Thor's first adventure sees him being banished to the human world without his godly powers and his journey to reclaim his title as Thor. In the film, we see the introduction of Loki, the main villain of the Avengers. Loki is back and better than ever, this time possessing the power of the Tesseract and having the Chitauri army behind him. The mysterious cue from Captain America's films is, in fact, the Tesseract. With Loki possessing this power, all heroes must unite, including the newly introduced Incredible Hulk. They defeat Luke, Loki and send him back to Asgard. The next movie in question, though, is Iron Man 3, which he's Tony Stark dealing with the Mandarin and his own personal demon. Spoiler alert, he conquers both. In Thor The Dark World, all that needs to be known is that the power gem was found and Loki is now the ruler of Asgard, disguising himself as Odin. The Winter Soldier is probably the most crucial film in this storyline of the upcoming new Captain America film. It sees the return of Cap's old friend Bucky Barnes, who is believed dead. He comes back with amnesia and under the moniker of the Winter Soldier, a Hydra henchman who is out to destroy S.H.I.E.L.D. But at the end of the movie, it is revealed that most of S.H.I.E.L.D. is already run by Hydra and has been for some time. It's Cap and Black Widow in a race against time to stop the cleansing that Hydra has planned for the world. Cap foils the plan, but not before losing Bucky. For now. In the smash hate Guardians of the Galaxy, all that needs to be known is the discovery of the Infinity Stones, gems that hold untold powers, which the Tesseract and Power Gem are. They also find the Space Gem. The final story before Civil War is Age of Ultron, which sees the most menacing villain, in my opinion, 
Ultron attempt to destroy the world. The, eventual, the Avengers sorry, follow him, of course, but not before discovering another Infinity Gem, which creates the Vision. And seeds of, of mistrust have been planted between Iron Man and Captain America. Wow, that was a lot of stuff. Well, until next time, this has been Kieran Gibbs, and thank you for watching. Thank you, Kieran. Next is Macy Melton with this week's weather report. Hello, and welcome back to Tomahawk Weather. This week, temperatures will continue to be in the mid-80s as a new storm system brings more rain and thunder. These storms are expected mostly in the morning, but could come at any time. This rain is a part of a large threat that covers most of the United States, creating a low pressure system, especially in the eastern states. Last week, fire leveled parts of Canada in the province Alberta. Almost 90,000 people were forced to flee the flames that burned hundreds of homes. The fire jumped roads and continued to spread, forcing the province to declare a state of emergency. Last Wednesday, the Red Cross came to help the survivors of the fire. Here are some pictures of the destruction. This has been your weekly Tomahawk weather. Thanks for watching. See you back next week. Thank you, Macy. Up next, Jocelyn Wadlow and Connor Barrett have the trending videos and this week's weekly viral. Welcome to the Weekly Viral Review, in which we tell you what's been recently trending on the internet. I'm Jocelyn Wadlow. And I'm Emily Flores from MLG. At Drake Bible on Twitter posted a video of what happens when a white girl listens to Drake. Dance, got a Hennessy in my hand. One more time before I go. Higher powers taking a hold on me. I need a one dance, got a Hennessy in my hand. One more time before I go. Higher powers taking a hold on me. NHL on Twitter shows us a short video of why we love Petco. Even though this isn't sports. Emily, this is my show, not yours. Okay, well, I'm taking over. Big stop, rebound, who oh, did you see that? Back to back, brilliant stop by Pekka. Jimmy Fallon shows us what it would look like if Donald Trump interviewed himself. Vice President's a very serious job, so I'm probably gonna go with somebody else. I would say maybe Kanye West. <laughs> Smart move. All right, guess it's time to go out and talk to that dopey goofball Jimmy Fallon and give him the biggest ratings his pathetic show has ever seen. <laughs> How do you think it's gonna go? It's gonna be really classy. It's gonna be really fantastic. It's gonna be you. And our adorable animal video of the week comes from Twitter of a dog eating a butterfly. Bentley! No, Bentley! Butterfly Bentley. No! 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 Bentley! And that's it for this weekly viral review. And remember, no Kona High School. Dress classy, not trashy, and watch MLG instead of this garbage. Or not. Thank you, guys. Cole Jackson is here with his weekly Bond election update. Tomahawk TV News presents The Bond the Election of 2016. Nokona's source for information. Hello, Nokona, and welcome to this week's Tomahawk Election HQ, actually the last Tomahawk Election HQ about the school's bond election. The people went to the polls, whether it be in early voting or in regular voting on May 7th, and this is how things turned out. So as you can see, the bond election did not pass. There was a feeling that this could have been close. So. What's going to be interesting is seeing how this all plays out next because our kids, our future has said they are not going to stop about this. They're going to bring it up sometime later down the road. Whenever that is, I don't know yet, but uh, we are not building a new school yet, and we have not made plans with the bond election as since it's no to do that. But they're going to keep this in the minds of voters. So we'll be right here with you whenever it is time to get this bond rolling again. See you next time. 
As usual, Zach Boyd has all of the answers to your questions in the segment Just Ask Zach. Hey there, everybody, and welcome back to Just Ask Zach. I'm your host, Zach Boyd. Our first question comes in from at Pippalicious15 asks, how often do you sing in the shower? Zach doesn't shower. I mean, I drown myself in girls. You drown girls? For fun? N no. Maybe. Maybe. Our next question comes in from at Breeze 33 asks, how do you feel about the new Space Jam movie? Is that it, it, is that the movie with like the uh, the baseball player? Yeah, and he, like, like, he plays some golf too. And it's like his last name's like J Johnson. Johnson, yeah. Johnson. I've only seen the first five minutes and the last five minutes. So I mean. So I, I see a lot of golf and baseball, but not much anything else. I don't know why they call it Space Jam. Like, not much go. space or jamming. Yep. A lot of sports. Our next question comes in from at Braden Skinner asked, are you and Connor still fighting? No. We aren't. That's all I have to say. Freaking Connor. Our next question comes in from at m.le asked, why are boys so mean? I don't know, why are girls who send in questions suddenly get that much uglier? Oh, come on, Zach, don't be like that. She's always been ugly. Well. Unbearably ugly. Yeah. Our last question comes in from at Desi underscore Ray 17 asks, who would win, Batman or Superman? Uh, one second. Uh, I didn't see the movie, so can you, like, I mean, explain what happened? like, Superman, like, flies in and stabs a guy, and, like, and he goes, oh, and then the guy stabs Superman, and he's like, ah, and then he goes, Poof, and then you're like, oh, no, Superman died, and then... People are like, ooh, cry, cry, grave, grave, Superman grave. And then people are like, throw dirt on his grave. And then his grave goes, and the dirt flies up. And you're like, he's not dead. And then Wonder Woman's like, oh, I'll get my own movie. So, yeah. So nobody knows. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Well, that's it for this week's segment of Just Ask Sack. Please send in more questions at hashtag Just Ask Sack on Twitter. And I'll see you next week, ladies and gentlemen. Great answer, Zach. Make sure to submit your questions to Just Ask Zach on Twitter. It's prom week at Nakona High School. Saturday, May 7th is prom for NHS. This year, it will be held at the First Baptist Gym, and it has been decided that it will have a Paris theme. Make sure to have a fun and safe prom night. Now, Madeline O'Neill and Emily Flores will have all of your fashion news. Welcome to this week's segment of MLG, Make It Look Gucci. I'm Emily Flores, if you live under a rock, and with me again is... Madison Caramel. For this week's segment, we'll be showing the gowns from the 2016 Met Gala. The theme this year was fashion in an age of technology. First up on Gucci is my absolute favorite in the entire fake celebrity world, and that is King Kylie. I'm speechless. This dress is absolutely amazing, and I didn't know it was possible, but she looks more stunning than all the Kardashians combined. She isn't my favorite, but this is one of my favorite dresses of the evening. She kills it. Next up is her sister, Kendall Jenner. Both Jenner sisters slayed. Kendall does look phenomenal, as always, but I gotta say I favor Kylie's dress more. Kylie just follows more along the theme, while Kendall went for a safer look. I have no words to describe this Jenner sister's beauty, but what I can say is Kendall's absolute body gold. And also on the Gucci list is Kim Ye. Kim and Kanye completely nailed the fashion in an age of technology look. The West slayed the color and the theme, and all I have to say about Kanye's contacts is hashtag vibes. Last on our Gucci list is none other than Queen Bey herself. Becky with the good hair, this is her skin on Beyonce's dress, and the pearls are actually Becky's teeth. <laughs> now my favorite category, and y'all all should know why. And if you don't, get out. Continue with your roast. Thank you. First off on Gucci Guilty is Gigi Hadid and Zayn. I hate her hair, makeup, her face, her jewelry. I hate her existence, and her dress is trash. Zayn, on the other hand, looked decent. He went with the theme. TBH, I was kind of expecting something like that from him. But I must say that his dancing was suffocate herself with a pillow. 
or I can suffocate her with the pillow. Next up is Amy Schumer. How does she always manage to look so awkward? The color is all wrong on her, and her hair and makeup aren't very flattering. Next time, try a side slit instead of a front one. Save that one for your honeymoon. No wonder she's a comedian. She's a complete joke. Her dress looks horrible, and what's with the hair? This is in the 80s, maybe. Only the Kardashians can pull off that dress if they wore something that hideous. Next up is Taylor Swift. Now I am so glad Harry Styles broke up with her. I wouldn't want to be seen in public with someone who dresses like her and herself either. First red, first red lipstick, now dark purple, the dress and shoes. I think Taylor is trying to let us know that she's going through her rebel phase. Wrapping up our Gucci Guilty segment is Haley Steinfeld. Emerald is not your color, sweetheart. How old is this girl anyway? Like, is she trying to look like a 35-year-old woman with all the dark colors her stylist just threw together last minute? The dress itself is hideous. Why would you even want to be seen in a dress like that? Who knows? All I know is the whole outfit and the person could definitely be burned. Well, that ended on a dark note. I'm a dark person. Well, go be dark in the corner. Anyways, here's another dress code note gone viral. The note reads, I'm sorry, can you see my shoulders? Men are never told that their legs, arms, or stomachs are a problem for other people. They are seen as human and very rarely seen as something there for your sexual exploits. We are 13 through 18 year old girls. If you are sexualizing us, you are the problem. Dress codes are perpetuating rape culture and oppressive objectification towards women. I just want to take a moment to applaud these young women for finally saying what has needed to be said. The dress code for girls are ridiculous. I go to a public school. I should be able to wear shorts, tank tops, holy jeans, crop tops, just anything I feel most comfortable and confident in. But the dress code is denying all teenage girls that because boys will be boys. But instead of women's clothing, maybe boys are the real problem here. If they could just learn to treat women with respect instead of objectifying women's bodies, then I wouldn't have to be ranting right now. That's all for this week's MLG, and you already know what I'm going to say, so I'm leaving. You go be dark in the corner. Goodbye. Thank you, girls. Austin Waters and Dylan Parker are back with their video game segment. Hello, I'm Dylan, and this is Austin. Welcome to this week's edition of Tomahawk Gaming News. This week, we will be looking at another Wii U game. It is the game of Super Smash Bros. Wii U Edition. This is a game that brings multiple Nintendo games together into one game and puts them against each other in an all-out brawl. Some characters of the game include a few Pokemon, Mario characters, Donkey Kong, Zelda characters, and much more. This is a game for anyone who is a fan of any Nintendo game. There are different modes for this game, like Tons Brawl, to see who can get the most points in a certain time, stock where you have a set amount of lives, and coin to see who can collect the most coins. This game also has an item that will randomly appear to assist you in your battle. This game is one of the best Nintendo games in, in, in my opinion. Now for gaming news. Call of Duty Infinity Warfare will have an addition exclusively to GameStop called the Legacy Pro Edition. It will include a remastered Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare, Infinity Warfare, and a season pass for $120. There will still be the normal $68 edition and the $80 edition. For Pokemon fans, if you play any of the new Pokemon games, you can get Darkrai from participating game stops. There will be a level 100 Pokemon. That is it for this week. Check back next week for everything to do with gaming. Great job, guys. Now Sabrina Matthews has her weekly field report. This is Sabrina Matthews with Tomahawk TV News. Cole Jackson and Kieran Gibbs went to a hand up to film a commercial for them. We got with them to ask them a few questions. Uh, we went to a hand up the other week to uh, film a commercial for the, for the organization. Like they do a lot of great things for the community and we thought we would give back. They actually asked us to and so we went to get a couple of shots. Um, good moving shots, some good informational shots, B-roll footage, and uh, to put them all together, maybe like a couple of interview pieces 
to be able to produce a commercial for them so more of the information and the, the ideas that they have that they put together and do and put, give to our community that would get out there more in the open. So basically that's all we were going there to do but after a while we obviously got enough shots. I mean the place is much bigger than you think it is but like after a while you, you got everything. Like you've moved through everything, you've seen them working, you've got the footage you need to make the commercial. But after a while, we, uh, we actually started helping them. We were involved in this one cool shot where we put uh, the camera on a box and we put it down the, the conveyor belt where they give out the boxes of food to uh, citizens and uh, we went it all the way with it so like we could have like a time lapse so it looks like it's a box going down the conveyor belt. That was really cool, but when we started doing that, uh, we started helping move the boxes on the conveyor belt. So me and, me and Kieran, we started actually helping. So after the camera got all the way through, we were already helping, so we might as well just stay and help. And so we actually probably stayed probably more than an, more time over there than we were supposed to because we were helping them hand out boxes to citizens, which was really fun. On Thursday, April 21st, Cole Jackson, Rob Norman, Luis Wico, and I all went to a organization in Kona called A Hand Up. And uh, it started out as us going there to film because uh, someone approached Mr. Norman about a commercial. I can't quite remember who. I think it was Zach Boyd. And asked him to uh, make a commercial. So we all went there and just got various shots and whatnot. And eventually it just boiled down to you can only shoot so much. And we just all kind of put our cameras down and started helping. I, we uh, got there. And what they're doing over there is really, really good because they're helping feed a bunch of people who really need it, who really are down on their luck and need the, need the food. And the amount of food that goes out is actually like quite astonishing. And the amount of people that need help and the amount of attention it needs. It's, uh, it's, quite, a, it's quite an experience. Uh, it, was, it was humbling going there because you go there and you realize how much people, don't, how much people need and how much people don't have and how lucky you are. And I, it, it was really humbling to help those people. This has been Sabrina Matthews with Tomahawk TV News, coming at you from Nakona High. Now, Connor Barrett will have your sports segment for the week. Hello, Nakona High School. I'm Connor Barrett, filling in for cold this week in Tomahawk Sports. In local news, 7-on-7 seven -seven football is finally back and started up. Just giving us a hint of what is to come later this fall. But personally, I'm a lineman, so I have no part in that, unfortunately. In national sports news, the NFL draft was on the 28th of last month, and I'll be covering some of the picks that came from Texas. The Cowboys and Texans made some pretty interesting picks in this draft. The Cowboys picked up Ezekiel Elliott, a running back from Ohio State, at the fourth pick in the first round, and Emmett Smith went so far as to say that Elliott will be even better than he was on Twitter. They also picked up Jalen Smith, an outside linebacker from Notre Dame in the second round. The Cowboys also beefed up their defensive line in the third and fourth rounds. The fourth pick in the 2016 NFL Draft, the Dallas Cowboys select Ezekiel Elliott, running back, Ohio State. The Texans picked up Will Fuller, a receiver from Notre Dame, at the 21st pick in the first round. They also got Nick Martin, a center from Notre Dame, in the second round. The pick that stuck out to me the most was Braxton Miller in the third round. He was a receiver from Ohio State who started out as a quarterback. His and Will Fuller's speed will give the Texans a lot of the speed that they were lacking last year on the offensive side of the ball. Now for the fun stuff. With the 85th pick in the 2016 NFL Draft, my Houston Texans select Braxton Miller, wide receiver, Ohio State. Okay. Congrats, young man. Let's go ball. There you go, Coach. You've got the floor on him, obviously. Oh, man, I love this kid. Great skill set. Look at him right there. For this week's portion of Extreme Sports, we see the Capitals defenseman Brooks Orpik, who has an extremely late hit. The hit was so late and so bad, he was suspended for three games. Appearance is the call on the penalty. Puck was long gone, and oh yeah, right to the button. And for Orpik following through, when he stopped up, he got him right in the elbow, right on the chin, and down he went. Well, that's it for this week in sports. Once again, I'm Connor Barrett, signing off. To close the show, 
Parker Marshall is back with his character. Yeah, it's Dale. With the Dale Show. Oh, dang it. Oh, howdy, y'all. This is Dale, and today I want to talk to y'all a little bit about golfing and what it takes to be a professional golfer like myself. Now, I'm going to go into it. I got little Jesus over here. Je Je oh, sorry, guys. Jesus, he's my caddy today. He doesn't do very much, but he gives me clubs when I need them. I like to sit out here and see what kind of cars I can hit, see if I can hit people walking by. Old women usually like to walk by here, and I'll take my five iron and smoke them right in the dome. It's real nice and funny, and my dog, Jep, likes it a lot. Now, anyways, I'm not saying I'm the best golfer in the world, but I ain't going to lie to y'all. I'm probably the next Tiger Woods or Tigger Woods, whatever they call them. Something like that. Anyhow, Jesus, clubs. Come on, boy. I ain't paying you to stand around. Now, the most important thing is when you're swinging your dang golf ball hitter, the dang wood right here, whenever you're looking, going, never keep your eye on the ball. Never. You want to already be looking forward like that. So you want to get on it like this right here, look that way, and then swing. Just like that. That's when you're going to get the best ever communication and connection. You're going to smack that sucker about 300 yards. But, you know, all them pros, pros say keep your eye on the ball no matter what. Watch what happens when I keep my eye on the ball. I missed. Yeah. Watch what happens when I don't keep my eye on the ball and I look over. Yeah, watch and learn. Woo! Yeah, that happened. Hold on. Jesus, ball me. Come on, boy. I ain't paying you to stand around. Run. All right. Tear up, come on. So easy a monkey could do it. Mm-hmm. I don't know why I'm paying this kid. Come on, get over to the clubs. Hey, club me. Need a different one. Anyways, like I was saying, this club right here, this right here, this is what I call get you out of trouble. She's old faithful. You hit, say you hit your spunky drive off a of par 16, and she goes off into the britches over there. And what you got to do is you got to get you your next biggest club. And this here, this here's an old Cleveland. And she's my, my next biggest club. And what I do is I take my old Cleveland. Time out. This is what happens when you keep your eye on the ball. You break stuff. And the ball don't even go that far. That's why I told you, always keep your eye on the target, not on the ball. I need a new club, Jesus. Give me something that ain't broken. You're lucky she ain't broken. Now, ladies and gents, I'm coming to y'all. This here is a public service announcement for all you want to be golfers out there. Uncle Dale didn't used to golf. Uncle Dale didn't know what golf was. But then he watched Sports Center one day and he told himself, hey, I'm pretty good at that. So what he started to do is he took little pieces of coal from his barbecue grill, a little charcoal, got him some old clubs, started hitting them out of the backyard, one after the other. Smack. Smack. Then I got my PGA Club Tour card. And ever since then, I've been making big bucks. I mean, whenever I can have time, I'm usually having to do a whole bunch of Lawn mowing, lawn tractor fixing. Whenever I get a little spare time, I like to bring my old golf club out here and smack the old smacky boo. You know, it's just me. That's all it is. Anyways, if y'all want to see something, I like to, if I can ever find one going by a truck or an old lady, I like to smack them, smack them real hard in the windshield. Maybe they'll crash or something. Something cool like that. So I'm going to take y'all through a little few practice swings here. Give you a little tutorial. Now, this is how you're supposed to hold your golf club. 
People say you're supposed to hook your fingers and what have you, and you, you take your thumb like that and put it over like that. They're wrong. They're wrong. You want to grab that sucker. You want a gripper and ripper. Kind of like an old baseball swacker. You want to get her like that where you have full control. Now they say shoulder length apart, that's crap. I want you to get wider in your shoulders. You got a whole bunch of stance. Way if a big linebacker comes after you, you just stick him like that. Now anyways, what you want to do is you want to be loose. You want to have a straight back and bent knees, just like that. And it's just the motion of the ocean, just like that. You want to flay that flame. Yeah. All right. Then basically you look at that sucker, she's coming in, just like that. You send her about two miles, three miles, I don't know. I'm gonna show y'all one more time. I mean, sometimes when you got that much torque, stuff like that happens. Jesus Club! What am I paying you for, huh? This here, this here's a chipping iron. Me personally, I never use a chipping iron. I get on the green right off the tee. So, for all you average golfers out there, you're gonna have to use one of these. What you do is, you approach. Whenever you're approaching, you just wanna hit it real nice and soft, and you wanna get her up there and roll up to the flag. Me personally, never had to do it. Never even attempted it. Cause I just tear up, grip it, rip it, let it fly to the green. She usually rolls in, but you never know. Anyhow, so what you do with these is, you hit them hard and they go high. Demonstrate. Yeah. Told you I ain't never done nothing like that. I tried. All right, y'all, about to smack her downtown. Wow! Well, it's all right. I got more clubs. Jesus, club me. Well, folks, sorry, but I got myself a little PGA tournament to get to, so I'm gonna have to go over there and win some money, show these suckers how you really golf. I'm gonna let y'all go right about now. I'll see y'all later. Jesus! Get back here, you're supposed to be caddying for me. You ain't getting none of that prize money. Thank you for tuning in, Monta County. We hope to see you back next week. Tomahawk TV News, Monta County's only newscast, coming at you from Nocona High School.